And welcome back, everybody. This is The Refresh Point. My name is Ben, and as always, I'm joined by my constant co-host, Steve. How's it going? You know, uh, end of another weekend, and uh, we are here talking, you know, about a, our upcoming hypest moment in both of our wife's careers. <laughs> That's right. We're hey, going to Japan, baby. We're going to Japan. Hey, can you hear that? <sighs> That is the sound of English slime players everywhere not getting their deck banned immediately before the world championship like all the JP slime players did. <laughs> I, I would point out that I was extremely confident that nothing would happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were. Now, and nothing did. And nothing did. Thank and God. So, uh, and so before the BCS 2023 World Finals, we're going to have a lighter episode today talking about the latest releases from the Winter Conference and our world's plans, or our Tokyo plans, realistically. We'll dive in right after y'all shuffle your decks, tap or cut, and we'll get right into the refresh point with some breaking news. The intern got us. Yeah. He got us. Yeah. He, he did one tweet and we were like, one hint? Nah, only one hint, and that was the play all along. Yeah, it wasn't one hint. Yeah, it was three and one. It was a three and one deal. So, <laughs> uh, one really good piece of news uh, from this is if you like Shaka Ganoshana. So, um, you know, we got the 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 sets that were announced in case you you missed the Winter Conference um, is the Shana Premium Booster Set and two different love live sets love life sif 2 and uh 10th any yeah. right or so, sif 10th any or whatever yeah uh important note here uh english will have for some amount of time like a kind of unrestricted yo setup yeah like a like an interesting one not, not because we don't we still don't have all of the cards if i recall correctly no no yeah. not even close yeah so we have something new yeah quote unquote <laughs> yeah so they're gonna they're gonna give it a little something that's gonna do a little bit there uh, the the love live is really nice if you're into love live i don't think that those sets are going to be super meta relevant um the shauna one is basically but yo with standby steve yeah standby yo i mean it's just it's just, <laughs> it's just it's like if you it's like how many times have you stand by to Benny Maru? It's like that, it's that kind of idea. No, nah, not nah. okay, but but Benny Maru is legitimately useless before level three. Yo actually does something. True. Yeah, yeah. no, you'll just block at level two, right? And everything will be just fine. It'll be like you got value. Uh so I it'll ha I, I'm just saying it won't it's not gonna propel any new decks into a spot in the meta that it isn't already at. Um, the Shauna set is really important because now we have basically the full modernized Shauna card pool. So that set will be meta relevant and probably pretty strong, I would say. Yeah, yeah. Um, so because none of those old Shauna cards matter at all. So basically you take the Dengeki cards and then you add these cards and you pretty much got a hundred cards worth of Shagran or Shauna. Um, very, we did it. very, very strong finisher. Congratulations. Yeah. Very reasonable <laughs> rest of the deck. So yeah, yeah for yep. sure. Uh, very nice uh, winter conference news. I was expecting blue archive. I believe we will get blue archive eventually because Bushiro does like to make money. So <laughs> um, it would be extremely <laughs> foolish for them not to. But it, it yeah, it was funny that we got like these two random love life sets after not getting love life for a while. Yeah, no, we haven't had a new love life set since love life sunshine extra booster that's it yeah that's the last one that is the last one so it's been like a hot seven years <laughs> since we've seen any love live so i guess yeah. the license must have gotten cheap yeah uh, good i mean i, I mean i i'm sure there were complications uh, that they worked through yeah i'm you know good, yeah. good for them good uh for hopefully them. uh good the next them. announcement we get will be some more uh of the um you know the juice the sweet juice that comes from Japan. The sauce. So, yeah, mm -hmm. we need some. We need some more of their, you know, their meta stuff. And you know, um, 
we, we're due for another English exclusive. You know? We are. Yeah. Although they do, I feel like they've announced those a lot at the world tournament itself. Yeah, so. I think. Yeah, I think for sure there will be some kind of announcement during the world finals. Like that's yeah. that's almost guaranteed. They've done it every year for like the past. Since, I don't know how many since years. COVID. I think. Yeah. 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 Because last year was Guilty Gear announced. And then the year before that was Adventure Time. No, no, no. Adventure Time was way, way back. But that was also like Avatar at Avatar Finals. A Avatar, I think. Yeah. And but yeah, yeah. We've we've traditionally gotten an English exclusive announcement at the World Finals. So yeah, we so good. we'll be looking forward to that. Um, yeah, my vote would be Avatar Two. But <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I, I was memeing about this uh, on Twitter the other day. They're gonna have to really pull out something for me to wanna to break out my wallet, cause I haven't really watched that much anime. No, me either. And, and so, like, I'm looking at the release so far. I, even though I saw Bochi the Rock, I was like, eh, I mean, really? Yeah, I didn't really. I, I don't know. I'm not like super gung ho about Oshinoko. I didn't watch it. Hmm. I'm not. Yeah, I didn't. I'm not on that specific idol chain, you know? Yeah, I I'm think... I'm not like uh, Shizukatsu and others getting out the, the, the light sticks and dancing to try to beg Bushiro to bring it over. Yeah, um, or Freeren, like... Freeren! Freeren! Okay, I, I, I would get Freeren. <laughs> yeah, I think everybody has that that's yeah, yeah. invested time in that show has liked it, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna watch it eventually. We'll get it was, there. It was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, I, I I would get Firin. I would hope that it would be a good deck, but we don't know, know yet. We we wouldn't know. Um, and besides, we'll know by then. <laughs> but I yeah, true, true. But um, I guess I thinking along the lines of English exclusives. Oh, I'm sure. kind of like not sure what they could bring out that I would be like, oh yeah, <laughs> Cowboy Bebop. Nah. Wouldn't get me. I know. That's because you're I'm just, not old enough to understand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm not young yet. I don't watch anime. I don't know why I'm playing this game, but you know, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, but I was joking the other day. I was like, if they can, like, go drag StarCraft out of Blizzard's rotting corpse, <laughs> then, <laughs> then, you know, I, I, I would shell out for a StarCraft set. But that's, that's a real... We're really digging deep there on that one. <laughs> yeah, that's a hard cope if I've heard one. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so yeah. So I mean, we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited. I'm excited. I think it'd be extremely funny if, like, alongside Bridget Brigade stays winning from the Guilty Gear crowd, they finally got a card uh, yeah. for the 8-hit wonder uh, promo if you go to 8 locals from January to uh, I June, think it's I June. Yeah. yeah, you get a while. Uh, you get a while, and if you go to eight locals, like monthly shop tournaments specifically. So I think I would guess it excludes like title cups and stuff like that. Um, you'll get to be able to redeem for a uh, two one paid to refresh punch that has Bridget's face on it. We and love refreshing here. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We do. Uh, and so the Bridget Brigade gets one single win out of a whole set of losses. But, yeah, I mean, um, you know, it. I'll say this: it's a good sign in the sense that, um, you know, maybe that maybe another Guilty Gear set is is is, you know, is far off in the horizon. Far off in the horizon, but, potentially on the way. I think it would be good if they actually did like. Uh, a premium booster or yeah. like an extra booster for love it. to see love to see a guilty gear like a deep like an unironic guilty gear and they they just call it like the season pass yeah extra just booster. give me the, that's right just give me <laughs> yeah. the next give me the next round of guys <laughs> yeah 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 Ex exactly exactly because they already because they already pulled a lot of the the base set cards from the another story quote unquote yeah uh, and we so also already we've have already gone the... through all of like the story content. So... Yeah, and we have some of the early season characters as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, so like think... any extra booster wouldn't necessarily have like it wouldn't have like more of that story content to pull from. Like the base set did a lot. It would just be like the moves. So I guess I'm not sure how willing Bushi Road would be to do that sort of thing. It but... would be yeah, it would be tricky to pull off for sure. Yeah, yeah. Like um... like art wise. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. For sure but it would be it would be cool it would be interesting um oh uh it would be funny if 
Okay. <laughs> Super like out there like uh, sort of thing because Arxis does in fact make Dragon Ball Z fighter or Dragon Ball Fighter Z or whatever. If they made a Dragon Ball Fighters set. I mean, you can't. Yeah, there ain't no way. <laughs> that ain't no is, way. That license is a bankrupt Bushiro. <laughs> <laughs> they yeah. got their own game. Yeah, yeah, they do. They, they always do. have. They do. It, they have. It pre-existed Weiss. <laughs> Ooh, if for some reason we got a, uh, a DNF set or a DNF dual set, that would be funny. That'd be funny. I don't think they would do that or it would work. But it would be funny. <laughs> yeah, I've been surprised a few different times by the, the JP content, just like because some licenses that would be on hard lockdown here in the states um, become they're they're very available in Japan. So like, you yeah, know, seeing yeah. Disney sets or, or Marvel yeah, sets. No, it's, crazy. it's also well, it was also funny to see that Guilty Gear got a set, an English exclusive set, even though there's definitely just a ripe group of willing Japanese players that would love to play Guilty Gear in yeah. Wise, I'm sure. It's a little weird. Yeah, but a little weird. Like, yeah, like I, I was joking, it's like Daisuke can't read his own cards. Like, he wouldn't... <laughs> <laughs> like... I don't presume to know whether he can read English. Yeah, but... true, true, true. But uh, Persona yeah. 5 Royal, all's forgiven. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear me, Bushi Road, yeah. all's forgiven. <laughs> Or, or at, if we at least got Persona 3 Reload, that would be like, it would be nice. Yeah. It would be nice. Yeah. Even though I know that on principle. That set's just going to be a standalone. Like, like it's you, not going to yeah, work yeah. with anything. I mean, maybe it'll work with Persona. It'll work with Persona 3, but like they wiggle in like the keywords to make it yeah. near impossible to make the cards useful. Plus yeah. they're so old. Like, yeah. Yeah. You. What we learned from the King of Fighters set is that, like, there's, like, one or two old busted cards that you could just drag from, <laughs> from the, like, you kick the vault open. You're like, give me that. <laughs> give me this broken shit that they definitely are never going to reprint again because they were smart enough to know. And it's like, yeah. all right, well, you might be able to use that. And so Persona 3 has some, like, it's just always old events, super old events. Yeah, yeah. So what we'll do you see. mean? Yeah, you're going to bring shuffle time back, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use cards from my hand to perhaps produce the exact same game state as before. <laughs> or even possibly a worse one. <laughs> or, or level up. Yeah, level up's kind of useful. Yeah, you don't want to be stuck at level three, right? Or level two, right? Yeah. <laughs> or stuck anywhere. St yeah. Don't want to be stuck at level three. Yeah, I'll just kill myself. <laughs> yeah, put me out of my misery. I don't want to be level three anymore. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So yeah. yeah, we'll see what comes from the announcements at Worlds. But we'll see. Uh, let's it, let's talk about let's talk about some non Weiss topics for a hot second. For the most part, this podcast focuses 100 of our content on Weiss Schwartz and competitive Weiss Schwartz in particular. But every once in a while, we'll we'll have to you know refresh ourselves by thinking about some levity and some light topics before a very intense competitive moment. This is the slice of life episode where the refresh point goes to Tokyo. Yeah. And it's like so, the class trip, except one of us is definitely way too old. <laughs> true. True. Uh, and so, uh, obviously to go to worlds, we're going to Tokyo and by God, we're taking advantage of our little impromptu vacation as much as we can. Uh, yeah, that's been the trickiest part of this, honestly. Yeah, yeah. Is that, like, I, you know, I want to, obviously, want to do well at Worlds. You know, love to win Worlds. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, I mean, got some time in Japan. We can yeah. do some Japan stuff. <laughs> yeah. That's guaranteed to be awesome. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Unlike my record at Worlds, which is not guaranteed to yeah, be awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's like, look, look. Yes, yes. I could go to Worlds immediately x2 you know just killed out of contention but then afterwards i could get some fucking ramen <laughs> yeah the uh this is your first trip to, J to tokyo yeah this is my technical second trip mm -hmm. i went one time with my family like six years ago on like a layover on oh. the way to vietnam got it 
So you were there yeah, home. this is my first trip to yeah, Tokyo. Like, <laughs> you were you saw the you saw the scenic Haneda Airport. <laughs> no, 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 we like stayed for a day. Oh, cool. And then and then left, and yeah. I, and they were like, "You get one morning, Ben. Pick somewhere to go." And I was like, "I guess I'm dragging us to Akihabara for like nice. a morning." Cool. And then I like looked at all of this stuff, and I was like, "That's eighteen. That's eighteen. That's eighteen. That's eighteen. That's eighteen. That's eighteen. A different section." That's 18, that's 18, that's 18. Oh, that's some light yaoi that I can like sneak past <laughs> and bring home. <laughs> nice. But this time, this time, nobody's stopping me. <laughs> yeah, um, I, yeah, I went to Japan 10 years ago. Um, uh -huh. so this would be my second trip, but, um, yeah, I imagine a lot of stuff's changed. You know, it's, it's been 10 yeah. years. So I'm looking years. forward to it. So uh, some of the plans we have original or from the from the get go from the start. Yeah. Uh, if you watched painfully live the entire Bushiro product stream uh, for for the Japanese product, uh, you might have caught a review Starlight portion of that, which was very very cool. And they announced uh, a little sneakily, and then later on a little bit more obviously that there's going to be a collab cafe in February. Now. Wink, wink, hint, hint, nudge, nudge. We're flying in and landing. I'm getting in on the 31st. Steve is getting in on the 1st. And in Ikebukuro, there's going to be a theme cafe for Review Starlight. And man, I am going to get all of the Mahiri stuff that I can. <laughs> it's really cool that that um, happened to line up, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like, really uh, lucky. Just, we're going to, yeah. unfortunately, we're going to miss there's a big. They called it like a sports festival revival event. That's mm. apparently pretty big at the end of the month that they're doing mm. where they've like taken all the girls and like paired them into like sports teams and made merchandise off of it. And I think yeah. they're going to do some kind of cool thing. So we're going to miss that, but sure. we are going to hit the theme cafe and I'm going to hit there literally when it opens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I mean, hopefully uh... we'll be able to just like, just snatch up all of the merchandise that uh, that I can. <laughs> One of the things that I learned uh, when I was in Japan last time is that Japan is a country of waiting, where you show up to a thing and you wait. Oh yeah, for sure. Like a lot of things that I would think there would be reservations for, there is not. It is waiting. It is waiting. You <laughs> wait in line. Yeah. yeah. So uh, it's at Princess Cafe Ikebukuro, and. Uh, after doing some light research going on the website and others, um, they, they'll they alternate between how busy it is sure. on doing free admission or like reservations over line. Yeah, like you get a ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we will see. I'm going to make a line account in advance and like friend the store. And then like if they do reservations, then I'll be ready. And then if they don't, then I'm going to head in and uh get it done <laughs> yeah i mean the faster uh yeah faster you can knock that out the better yeah yeah so that'll be good um yeah. <clears throat> that should be a lot of fun and and along the way my goal is to take all of this money that i've converted into physical yen and spend every cent of it on food yeah that yep. seems reasonable yep i uh i'm I we when we went last time we brought an empty third suitcase. Yeah, yeah. And just loaded it up with all the stuff from Japan and then dragged it back. Yeah. Um probably we'll repeat that. That that strategy worked really well. Um that's valid, yeah. But uh I think uh yeah, my the things I'm looking forward to um we didn't do hot springs last time, so we're going to do hot springs this time. Very okay, exciting. yeah. Yeah. Um, because like the thing is, the thing they don't tell you about long vacations. I was in I was in Japan for two weeks last time, and um, long vacations like when you get to the end of them, whatever you scheduled at the end of your trip, like be prepared to not want to do that. <laughs> yeah. Unless yeah, you yeah. like scheduled breaks, like like dead days in between, because like we were so intent on getting as much in as we could, right? So we did Shinkansen. We went to we went to Kyoto for a few days. We, um, you know, we walked everywhere. We saw as much as we could, and then we were supposed to go to Hakone last year. The last time we went, it was like it was like the last two days of the trip. We we're gonna go there and then come back. And when we got back to Tokyo from Kyoto, we were both just like, 
the last thing we want to do is take another trip to go you know an hour and a half yeah to do that yeah and so we're like next time next time and yeah. so this is next time so yeah, we're not yeah, gonna yeah, we're not yeah. gonna miss twice <laughs> not gonna miss twice for sure um and speaking of blowing all of our money on food you made a reservation for us we did uh where are we going steve so there's a we're gonna go we're gonna get some authentic japanese wagyu from kobe and there's of course uh, a number of places you can go to get this done yeah and so um i chose a place called ishida which is in ginza and yep. um yep we're gonna go and we're gonna eat kobe beef as a as a group yeah this reservation was fucking pricey eh yeah we won't talk about the exact figures but what we will say is that um if you want to get kobe and you want to get this kind of experience um you should be prepared to yeah create some new creases in the wallet to get it wide enough <laughs> to get the money out um but yeah I, I'll, I'll say that uh i i converted a good amount of cash into yen already and so after Steve made the reservation and told us all what exactly we were paying. I basically cracked open my wallet and went like, well, here's a fat stack of this fucking yen that I just got. I guess you have it now. Yeah. See, yeah. One of the few, benef one of the few benefits of keeping me around is that uh, I have stable credit and I can just handle this. <laughs> Being old is but, useful in some yeah, ways. Yeah. But and yeah, so I, I've, I've I, had yeah. it before. Um, yeah, yeah. And it was a good experience. I'm looking forward to it to, to having it again. Yeah, yeah, for um, sure. For sure. And so I'm happy that you guys are going to get to have it because it is part of the reason you pay for it is for the experience itself because you're going to, you know, th these are counter side seats. So we're going to watch the preparation. Oh, like, it's all right in front of you. Nice. And so, like, you're going to get to see these guys do what they do best, and they're going to make it absolutely perfect. There's no mistakes, and there are no, there's no confusion. It's exactly – these are masters performing their craft. So yeah. that's Sick. That's great. Yeah. And so on the opposite end of that, um, I'm making lists of restaurants for, yeah. like, each area that at least I'm going to be in. I have one set for Ikebukuro, and this is the plan. Um, basically – uh, after I get settled in and then I go to the theme cafe and I settle that business I'm gonna be walking around. Yeah, and I'm gonna want some food. Yeah, and I'm not really want to think about it No, we're gonna look at this list uh, Whatever's closest in walking distance that looks good. I'm gonna walk there and just eat Yeah, I, <laughs> I'm really down for um, I gotta I gotta hit a few more Japanese specialties that are a little annoying to find here in the States. Obviously, because I live in a major city, I can get access to some of this stuff all the time. Sure, yeah, but like, yeah. I want to get some souffle pancakes. I haven't had those. Souffle pancakes? Yeah, yeah i never, never heard of that. The yeah. Japanese pancakes? So no. Like this, they're, like, huge. No. They're, like, this tall. No, that's crazy. And so, like... This it, tall, he says, on yeah. our audio podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're very tall. And uh -huh. so, like, but they're, they're made with, like, meringue. And uh -huh. so, like when you make them they're very precarious it's kind of an, <laughs> it's kind of annoying to make at home okay yeah and so all right. like there's these super tall pancakes and, yeah all right uh, yeah, very, okay. obviously in the in the japanese style of bread everything's like very light very fluffy that's like just how, i see how they i like see it. i see so, yeah. yeah um also um like getting seafood in japan man you gotta do it because i mean yeah we're gonna do that you for just, sure like you're gonna have the the best possible acts our seafood access here is fucking bad like we're too far from the ocean like there's not it's just not good and so like being right there like so they closed down sujiki right that's the old fish market oh they closed it down they moved it right oh, so okay. it's not where it used to be oh okay and so there's a new fish market but the, where it used to be is now a bunch of like stalls oh that sell pre that sell pre-prepared food nice and so you still go down there because you can see the old market and then you can eat like your body weight and like awesome food yeah so. yeah nice sick yeah i mean the yeah like my goal is to eat five meals a day yeah i'm not sure how 
As long but as they're small, it's, it's we're gonna, doable. Yeah, yeah, we're going to go for it, for sure. There's like, like a million places to eat street food. Like, it's everywhere. Exactly, yeah. And like, then, yeah. It'll be easy. Almost. Having cash on you is real important because there's like a vending machine in every corner. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. And it's going to be cold so we can get the hot drinks, the, the <laughs> vending machine hot drinks. Yeah, 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 absolutely. We could be the anime characters that are like bouncing in between their hands because it's too hot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. And so there's that. Um, I think we're planning on going to Shibuya on like the Monday after Worlds. Yeah. Uh, Do and some P5 sightseeing. Some P5 sightseeing. And then uh, for Steve and I, that, that'll be pretty close to the end of our trip because uh, yeah. I, I don't know when you fly out. I fly out on the Wednesday. Same. Yep. So we both fly out on the Wednesday after Worlds. Yeah. So I think on Tuesday, uh, we're going to go to Odaiba because. Oh, you, you guys? Okay. Um, we can see the Gundam. Uh, oh, that's the big nice. Gundam place. That's the big Gundam, yeah, Gundam yeah. spot. Okay, that'll be cool. Yeah. You I might go, just... Yeah, you should I, go too. Okay, I might. Or I might just... I don't know how I'll be feeling by yeah. that point. So I might just then ironically wake up and be like, I'm just going to walk around Tokyo or train around Tokyo yeah. and eat food yeah. until I can't physically yeah. at all <laughs> yeah Odaiba's like manhattan it's like off on an island and oh, so okay, you have okay. to take a there's a specific bridge rainbow bridge you have to take to get over interesting it. it's very cool that yeah that sounds really cool and that also puts it like way down on the list of things that i want to do near the end <laughs> of my trip <laughs> because it'll be like the day before we leave and so i'm gonna be uh, either i'll want to like go back to Akihabara and like just do like last minute shopping yeah uh or i will want to go eat at all of the places that i haven't yet that are nearby and and yeah just yeah eat good good foods unfortunately um it's a little more compressed than i'd like um you know my itinerary so like yeah it's yeah gonna, for sure it's gonna be a really busy trip for me like that monday that monday is gonna be action-packed yeah so we're gonna go to shibuya we're gonna sightsee oh, we're gonna yeah. go to ginza we're gonna but i gotta come back from makone oh that morning oh so yeah fun yeah no it's gonna be real it's gonna be real busy you know the fun the fun thing for me is that throughout all of this i'm gonna be experiencing all th like basically like three of the kind of a, like accommodations that you might get when you go to tokyo yeah because i'm gonna I, when i come in so I won Duluth, and they were kind enough to give me uh, three nights of a hotel room, which awesome. Now, unfortunately, if I'm going to be there for a week, we're going to need about four more nights somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, um, and so on night one, uh, I ended up booking out a capsule hotel. So we get to go to the coffin and see how it is to like bump my head on the ceiling whatever <laughs> i've watched it I, on like, youtube some up. of them look like fairly reasonable uh-huh yeah. but man yeah it's i mean i paid 20 dollars for this night yeah right? you're gonna be in it <laughs> you're just gonna be you're just gonna be in it bro 20 bucks yeah dude woof Twenty dollars what i will say is having a historically low yen to dollar ratio is gonna be a big winner for you in this trip <laughs> because when I went, it was around ninety-five. Uh huh. Yeah. And right yeah. now it's at sixty-eight. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Which is crazy. I might, I might unironically uh, go convert to more cash later, but we're kind of, we're like sitting on it. I'm not sure yet. I, f I always feel like I have to have enough money, but we're not sure. And like the the annoying thing is, my credit card works overseas, but it's also like how many times can i actually use it <laughs> yeah uh like i said it was 10 years ago totally different time but um i found my credit card to be not very useful in, in japan exactly right so we'll see we'll see um but yeah uh and so we start with the capsule hotel and then the next day uh Bushiro has kindly allowed us to check in to a hotel room i don't know when the check-in time is um, but if it's like in the afternoon, what's going to happen is 
I'm gonna look stupid because I'm gonna be carrying around this massive green like checked luggage suitcase <laughs> around the entirety of Ikebukuro <laughs> while I'm waiting for my fucking hotel to be open and check in. <laughs> Sometimes um, if you go before check in, they'll stash that for you. Yeah, yeah. So it might be at least worth talking to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd be but, nice, but, but yeah, you know. We're prepared <laughs> right. for what will happen. Uh, and then after that, I got like a hostile, like 10 minute walk down the way from the hotel uh, for Post Worlds. Ah, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So we go from like a little, a coffin to a room to uh, a dormitory. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, we've got all of the different accommodations that we really could get. Yeah, yeah, you're definitely... You're <laughs> Except for def the MAGA cafe, I guess, but... <laughs> you're definitely on the budget end of uh, of all the accommodations that could exist in Tokyo. For yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and also, the day after Worlds, uh, there has been organized a post-Worlds tourney. Yeah. Uh, to try to get together a little bit more uh, international action between the JP player base and the uh, international player base. Uh, so that'll be fun uh, to get to. I think the the location is still like to be determined, uh, but it is going to be all like players that have qualified to worlds or have historically or have done well or like yeah done they're well gonna regional and they're gonna include all the WGP people also. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that'll be cool. Except for you know if we all missed it, slime got fucking shot in JP. Which is the format that that tournament will be played at. So I don't really know what I'm going to play for that. <laughs> yeah, that might be tough. Um, uh, yeah, and we're, we're kind of leading towards just like uh, just bringing in a review deck for the, the shits and the giggles to just run it down the lane, have a little fun, get fucking like destroyed by some, I don't know. Because they also banned Chainsaw Man and Pad, so I, I don't know what like the good lists will be that will just kill me or, but I'm sure like they'll declare some effect and I'll be like, word, damn, that's rough. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't think, yeah, I don't think I'm going to have time to, to fit that in, um, but uh yeah, hopefully um, it's a lot of fun. I do know some of the people who qualified from WGP and they're very cool. I know a bunch of the people who are going to Worlds and they're very cool. So um, should be a good time. Like it's yeah, yeah. It's it's good to have that kind of informal sort of thing. It builds uh, builds rivalry, builds camaraderie. It's nice. So. Yeah, it'll be a good time. It'll be a good time. And uh, oh, and I think uh, Ian and I are making sure that we get. Uh, what is it? We're gonna go down to Justin or somewhere else, and I'm gonna go get myself a new cowboy hat and a new pair of boots because I haven't gotten one in like six million years. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I forgot some of the. Have a, <laughs> some have, of the have a cowboy outfit proper for when we <laughs> walk down the lane. <laughs> the thing is, is that like, there's gonna be people from Japan that are going to see you and they're going to be validated. <laughs> they're gonna be like, see, this is how they all are. <laughs> and I'm just gonna be like, uh, that's right. <laughs> all the Texans, look at us. Hashtag not all Texans. <laughs> but, yeah. No, it'll be fun though. I I've been meaning to get a new pair of boots and hat for a while, so it's a good excuse for sure. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they you guys just, do you. Uh, just, yeah, yeah never, have some fun with it. I'm never trying to yuck anybody's yum, but don't expect me to wear a cowboy hat. Ah, boring. <laughs> but yeah, uh, and so uh, one more thing for today's episode. We'll stop back real quick to the spike corner where nothing new has really happened because nothing happened as expected during the product stream. Uh, and so it's just kind of like a, a last, a last kind of, a last stop yeah. before we, we head on into the abyss. I'm bringing slime. Steve, you are bringing, uh, so Mori Gura. Yeah. So I spent weeks on this podcast talking about Mori Gura. 
I spent time explaining why I thought it was good, explaining why I thought that it was a it was a more reasonable approach, that it had good outcomes, and it had increased stability, which made it better than the standby Gura deck. And it felt appropriate for me to um, show my belief and do what I said I would do. You know, I said it was a good deck. I thought it was a reasonable approach to the meta. And so I will be playing, yes, Hall Eye of Choice Pants Morigura at Worlds because I believe that that deck is the best Hall Eye deck. Boom, right there, there it is. Check back in after eight by Hollow Live wins the world finals and we're all just sitting here like. <sighs> I took the risk and it was calculated, but. <laughs> Man, am I bad at math? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, as a Sal player that has pivoted to now Morigura, what do we think the other uh, 15 odd Sal players are gonna pivot to? Um, I would say that if you pivoted to slime, then I wouldn't blame you because it's got a lot of the same feelings just later where it's like, um, your time to arrival on board state dominance is delayed slightly. Um, and so you can't really like drop the same sort of chokehold on the game like, like Alice could, but, um, it's a more firm grip that is harder to break and once it's on you know you get to kind of determine the direction of the damage game from that point on um it is very difficult to dislodge miran from the board um either with because of power or because of um counterplay uh or because you can't use your counterplay um for all those reasons i think that slime would be a fine pivot like if, if that's what you if if that's you wanted the same feelings that you had from alice just not quite as th thorough for the entire game then sure right um you could you could just play um some some type of mirror deck in it and you you'd get the same sort of feelings i would guess but i imagine a lot of people were were like me and they were um fairly if you've been playing if you played alice a lot prior to the to the restrict then um, you might be feeling a bit rudderless in terms of like none of these decks really feel like a deck I want to play so it's it's difficult to say um, I'll, I'll I'll be looking forward to to seeing what the, the the best players in the world decided to do you know in lieu you know given given the parameters we have now for the meta I think it'll be highly interesting um I think it'll be interesting to see if Guilty Gear can make any sort of splash. Yeah. Um, I think that both Ramlethal and Eno, like, can have some legs. Uh, Eno, just in the sense of like, you, like you, you do struggle to get on the board against Slime, but you also get like a free deck shuffle back, which can make things you know untenable depending on game state. And like the deck doesn't have a lot of ways to really mess with the opponent's deck otherwise or compression otherwise, right? Uh, because you have a Fumio that like costs a lot and then you have the, what is it? And then you don't have a stock swap. So like compression can become untenable to deal with otherwise. Yeah, it's 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 a bit complicated. Um, the problem with the Eno is that um, she she does give your opponent a, a free refresh. Um, now whether that's good or bad is is kind of undetermined. Mm -hmm. But also her other effect is costly and weak. So pay two burn two is is pretty. That's a pretty tough way to win games. Yeah, for sure. So it's in my opinion, if you if you decided you didn't want to play Ramlethal for whatever reason, I, I'm not sure what what that reason would be. Maybe you don't like Ramlethal as a character, or or I'm sure there are other reasons. Maybe you don't Six like packets. The, you don't like the color green. I, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure there are reasons. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, if you weren't gonna play Ramlethal and just play Kai Mei, nah. like, like Kai Mei, 
Um, uh. Kai, Kai Mei is probably the second best in terms of like end games. Yeah. The Eno, the Eno just doesn't do anything. Like I, I refuse to believe that pay two burn two is gonna get you there. Yeah. In, sure. in a modern wise uh, setting. You know what I think is something that's I feel like just should be played with. Maybe I'm just you know maybe I can't deck build. I can't value good enough things. Soul just has to be good enough to try. Yeah, I think so. But like I've seen it I've seen nobody try it, like at all. Like even all the deck techs, you know, it's Kai Mei because that's like the the funny one. We can assign cancel, you know, things and restand and then Ramathal's super cheap and we can stand by her. And Soul, you know, he's just there. He's you know, he's a real Shoto character, honestly. He's just got pay one, ditch one, burn four. On play, heal. But then he gets on reverse, pay two, ditch one, clock the top of their deck. Yeah, he's. <clears throat> he reminds me a little bit of some other finisher. Like, burn four is just the type of mechanic that, like, will either terrify your opponent or relieve them. Like,. Either they know it's gonna they're they're gonna live because fours just aren't gonna land in their current configuration, or they are terrified they're going to die because fours will definitely can land in their configuration. And and even yeah, and like definitely as well, like pay one ditch one burn four is like a ridiculously cheap like, relatively burn four. Relatively, right? Like climax play, pay one ditch one burn four, like we get and it doesn't like use the memory like mechanic that like yeah a lot of the the other stuff does and so it's it's like really easy to make happen for the most part yeah and you even have like the trial deck soul that can just ditch and grab a climax in case we didn't get the door through our pants from kai right yeah it's just a question of um if if you believe that pay one ditch one burn four is a reasonable mechanic then why wouldn't you just run ram like that becomes the argument because for three less stock and two less cards in hand you pretty much get a very similar output um only the packets are a bit smaller but in, in a lot of game states that's better yeah and so the real question then really becomes how many of the clock tops can we ever afford yeah. in a game? So I, I believe I mathed it out. So double soul with double clock kick going in is a six stock play. Because you generate the stock in between attacks. Sure. And so it's a six stock play with one, two, three, four, like with a full hand. You would need a full hand. Because it's like you need the you need two souls, a door. Probably if you play another guy, then that's another card in hand. And then we need to ditch uh, four total. Yeah, so we need what? Four, eight, ten, minus three, seven? Seven stock? I thought it was six. Because we, so we play four, both souls. Four stocks of souls, four stocks of clock kicks, and then two clocks, two stocks of uh, pay one, ditch one, burn four. So that's yeah. ten stocks total, minus three from attacking. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah. So, not an unreasonable play, but now we're down to five packets. Yeah. Now yeah. we have two, like, certainty damage. Like, yeah, non, yeah. non damage certainty packets. Yeah, yeah. Um, But it's it's tricky. It is. I, I think, think maybe maybe the play is to run it with standby. So you can, you can create a, like, a pseudo, like, a setup where you mitigate a whole bunch of your costs by just putting out free guys yeah yeah like a standby giovanna setup and you just try to like generate enough cash in hand to make this whole thing happen yeah instead of like yeah but it's like instead of trying to pay for ramlethal two turns in a row you're trying to pay for like the one big soul yep. cash out yeah of sorts but yeah the the trick of that would be like keeping the damage state stable because kind of the problem with standby is that you'll be hitting very you'll be hitting for one a lot and your triggers and standby targets in in um in guilty gear are pretty weak yeah yeah so like, like bike a great card yeah but that's literally but. the only thing you'd ever want to stand by 
is like okay we get biken but like your standbys at zero are horrible and um there's not a lot to be done about it and you don't have a lot of good standby threes so it's basically going to be like standby for biken standby for soul everything else we don't we don't give a shit no no standbys so um yeah i i don't know whether it, it would be good or not um but it's certainly worth thinking about and trying it's definitely like i think it's definitely the most like vanilla guilty gear deck that you could have but also one that's not like you're flooding climaxes into your hand and because like ramlethal is like pants bar for example pants bar and standby bar are probably the standby bar is like slightly is like a lot better in terms of like yeah your climaxes but also could be worse for your like deck speed and like it's worse for your climaxes in the sense that you'll have less of them probably yeah yeah um and you'll deal less damage during the game but if you're playing ram you can mitigate that a little with your um the ram uh familiar true true true, true, souls. true true so that kind of helps um i think standby bar is the lower end of that floor where like you're gonna get more flattened outcomes but i think they'll just be worse most of the time mm -hmm. pants bar i feel like has the highest ceiling where it's like if you can explode on your opponent with damage and even if not you'll always have enough pluses to like be able to make things happen during the during the, the turn um the trick with that is not killing yourself with with triggers but um you do have i mean pretty good deck speed like it's that's that's a pretty good deck in my opinion yeah but we'll see we will see uh but i mean i feel like at this point like you know between this and last episode basically everything that really needs to be said has been said about us getting ready for worlds it's just kind of you know put up or shut up yeah if i could condense it all and if i could condense all my thoughts of, about the meta into one statement i would say this if you believe that your deck can do well against hall live or even against hall live and well against slime or even against slime send it because that will be half the field for those two sets those are very popular sets and they're very meta sets and so that's just that's half the field and so if you're weak against overlord don't worry about it because there won't be that many it's a difficult deck to pilot and it's it's very wonky so, so if you lose to overlord hopefully we don't run into overlord yeah that's the thing is like at some point you're gonna have to accept the fact that you're not gonna be good against every deck you're gonna have to take some risks with your deck selection unless, unless you're playing unless slime. you're playing slime yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> so play slime. <laughs> Unless you're an idiot like me. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. That's that's the key thing. Like somebody's somebody's been cooking. They've cooked up the full anti slime deck tech and they're ready to go. And now they're just hoping they run into five slimes in a row. And then they're ready. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna kill me. They're gonna kill all those other stupid slime players and then they're going to run face first into Overlord and die. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Um, we'll see. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be a lot of fun. It'll be yeah. very interesting to see uh, the world's outcomes. We will try to um, record some content there, like whether it's some kind of interview maybe with some of the other players or um, just like maybe just like a little quick check-in update uh while we're there or like right afterwards uh we can have some fun with it we might yeah you know depending on how well it does there might be like here's a little drunk vlog from <laughs> after a bunch of us went x2 and just like died instantly or it'll be like we're fucking we're so good at this game of course we're so good at this game you know <laughs> we'll see we'll see um uh, I don't think we really have the capability at this time to really bring stuff out there and do anything more. There's certainly not enough time like that I would want to try to set up something like that. Because uh, it's like, if we bring our mics and stuff and like our luggage gets fuckered for some reason, then there's like only four days to really recover it before we need to fly back anyway. So 
Yeah, yeah. Not really worth the stress. We're gonna go try to win worlds and eat good food. <laughs> yeah, you might get a you might get a little quick and dirty refresh point. Just yeah, update. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. there won't be a full podcast, sadly, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. If one of us wins, we'll let you know. You'll be the first to know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Y'all y'all will know because presumably the you'll you'll see it on stream, so there's that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. There, there there is that for sure. Uh, so yeah. Uh, and if you want to see a behind the scenes write up on this or any other episode upcoming of the refresh point, then you can join the three crazy supporters over on our coffee page. Um, we have a coffee page and you can buy shirts handmade by us, lovingly handmade that will say, you know, I lived triple Gura and all I got was this shitty t-shirt. We have our order of first seconds coming in hot uh, so that you can flash the good little going first and impact font and style uh, with our brand new fresh logo on the back. Um, you know, stickers with the same logo and we'll come up with other sticker designs as we go along. And um, as I've alluded to earlier, you can get a behind the scenes write up of uh, every upcoming episode that we will do from now on where I will endeavor to showcase some of the behind the scenes workings of how the episode gets put together and what kind of our thoughts were going in and out of the episode. And you can have your name in flashing colors in the credits of our YouTube and an audio shout out. Just like right now, shout outs to Andrew Yin. John Caparasso and Billy for supporting us at the crazy supporter tier. If you want to join them, the link is in the description below on YouTube in the description of our Spotify episode of our, po the description of whatever podcast platform you're listening on. And so that's our show for today. So tune in next time after your next deck out and don't you forget to take the refresh point.